Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Mid Speeds Live class. I will go ahead and mute everybody. We'll get started. All right, let's start off with some common words. Here we go. Ready? Monday gave less sale, regret, rest, card, ready, cut, delay, looking, surely, replying, orders, ordered, Friday, half, war, between, things, offer, recent, weeks, invoice, promptly, supply, country, indeed, connection, different, where, records, trouble, contract, talk, taking, accept, sincerely, December, express, later, value, yes, November, play, months, took, cold, together, job, when, woman, terms, secretary, members, living. All right, now I've got some tangle tamers. Here we go. Urged cooperation, outspoken proponent, triggers landslide, protest disrupts, county authorities, decomposing bodies, backyard swimming pools, working homeless, dancing festivities, habitual violators, flames extinguished, environmental problem, private restaurant, disillusionment evidence, wielding jackhammers, aggravated drought conditions, profoundly superstitious and measurable standards. All right. Let's tackle some legal doublets. Here we go. Reviewing court, bench warrant, operative dates, holographic will, common carrier, absentee voter, existing statutes, wrongful death, moral turpitude, judge advocate, non-cupative will, prejudicial error, actuarial table, parole evidence, quick, quick claim deed, artificial person, amicable action, conditional sale, collateral issue, judgment debtor, eminent domain, mechanics lien, frivolous action, legislative intent, probable validity, prevailing party, local jurisdiction, governing rules, and closing argument. All right, now I've got some words that end with RG, RGZ, RM, and RMZ. Here we go. The amount on the form was staggering. We were staring at the swarm of bees. We lost our bearings on the farm. The terms of the job were boring. Bearing storms, we will make it. A daring man determines his future. If the earrings alarm you, hide. He was swearing while he was shearing. I am aspiring to own a worm farm. Do you affirm they are acquiring it? The paper was adhering to the warm wall. No harm will come from her adoring you. Alarms were sounded by the stammering boy. I was admiring your form. You determine who does the steering. She hurt her forearm out on the farm. The storm washed away the berm. She is starring in a great play. The bugs came in swarms. They were tearing the forms apart. All right. Now I've got some words 
that focus on the OO, which we write it as the AO. All right, here we go. And these are in sentences. The groom was soon to be doomed with a broom. Blood came from the root of the tooth that was pulled. I caught a coon by the brook at noon. I sat on a stool in my room reading a book about snook. The food was served by the pool at noon. I was a fool to let the boom hit me while sailing the sloop. The moon looked beautiful over the babbling brook. The rookie shot at the crooks with the loot. He was too pooped to spook the children. It took her 10 minutes to shampoo her poodle. The crook took off through the door like a cook. The girl looked pooped from cooking all day in the sloop. The poor boy was sent to his room until noon. My mother broke her foot down by the brook in a loop. The book told how to pull a, tooth, a loose tooth in a booth. The baby took his spoon and threw it across the room. After swimming in the pool until noon, I needed a shampoo. The food and the room were poor for the money. I have a blouse with a hood, a crooked neck, and it's cool. The wooden room shook from the caboose on the crooked track. I have a blouse with a hood, a crooked neck, and it's cool. All right, I repeated that because I said crooked instead of crooked. All right, let's do some names and addresses. Here we go. Jeffrey R. Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N, 25 East Ridge Drive, Greenwood, Indiana, 46142. Micah C. Aldron, A-L-D-R-O-N, P.O. Box 480, 5 Green Mount Drive, Portland, Maine. Ms. Lisa A. Caddy, C-A-D-Y, Route 2, Box 152, Wabasa, Minnesota, 56293. Lisa S. Gore, G-O-R-E, Box 390, LaGrange, Texas, 78945. Julie L. Troffler, T-R-A-U-F-L-E-R, 331st Avenue, Southeast, Mars, Georgia, 51031. Sorry, I'm getting a notification here. Joe Z. Stone, S-T-O-N-E, P.O. Box 138A, Shipley, Washington, 99004. Ms. Billy T. Everett, E-V-E-R-E-T-T, -E -E 411 Harrison Avenue, Greensburg, Pennsylvania, 15601. Um, Donna M. Bean, B-E-A-N-E, -E, 2600 Highway, 297A, Cantonment, Florida, 32533. Rebecca C. Vokovich, V-O-K-O-V-I-C-H, 702 Apartment 2B, East Mount Drive, Nats, Utah, 73203. All right, I've got some medical words for you. Here we go. Epithelized, covered with or converted into epithelium. Esophagus, the tube that leads from the pharynx to the stomach. Eversion, a turning outward. Excision, the act of cutting away or taking out. Fascia, the fibrous membrane covering muscles and other tissues. 
femoral pertaining to the femur or the thigh bone. Femur, the thigh bone. Fibrosis, the development or formation of fibrous tissue. Fibula, the small outer bone of the leg. Flexion, the process of bending. Fossa, a depression, furrow, or sinus. Gain green, mortification or death of a part of the body caused by interference of local nutrition. Gastronemius, the largest and most superficial muscle of the calf of the leg. Jelly, Leonardo Jelly, inventor of the jelly wire saw, a wire with saw teeth, used in cranial operations. Green stick fracture, a fracture in which one side of a bone is broke, the other being bent. Gyri, the convulsions of the brain and the spiral cavities of the internal ear. Hamstrings, the tendons of the posterior muscles of the thigh. Hematoma, a tumor or swelling containing blood. Hemopericardium, effusion of blood into the pericardium, mem membrane sac around the heart. Hemorrhage, any discharge of blood from the blood vessels. Hernia, a protrusion consisting of an organ or part projecting through some natural or accidental opening in the walls of its natural cavity. Hylus or hilum, a small fissure, notch or depression, and homogeneous, having the same nature. All right. got some common phrases and you are going to want to phrase as much as possible. Here we go. Is that a fact? As a matter of fact. Matter of fact. Can feel. Can he feel. Can I feel. Could feel. Did he feel. Did I feel. Does he feel. Do I feel. Do you feel. He feels. I can't feel. I didn't feel, I don't feel, I feel, if he feels, if I feel, if you feel, it feels, may feel, shall feel, she feels, should feel, so he feels, so I feel, so you feel, that he feels, that I feel, that you feel, they feel, to feel, we feel, what he feels, what I feel, what you feel, when he feels, when I feel, when you feel, where he feels, where I feel, where you feel, whether he feels, whether I feel, whether or not he feels, whether or not you feel, whether you feel, which he feels, which I feel, which you feel. All right, I'm going to go down the list and just read off a bunch of different um, briefs. And these are very common briefs. And if you don't want to use the brief, you can write it out. Here we go. Ready? Accident, account, actually, admissibility, admissible, aggravated robbery, agreement, alcohol, allegation, allege, applicable, argument, assault and battery, at that time, at the time, at this time, attorney, background, beyond a reasonable doubt, bias or prejudice, burden, call your attention, chosen, circumstance, circumstantial, circumstantial evidence, closing argument, closing statement, commit, common sense, conduct, confidential, connection, consistency, inconsistency, 
convict, corporation, courtroom, credibility, credibility of the witness, credible, credible evidence, criminal case, dangerous weapon, deadly weapon, decision, defendant, degree, deliberate, deliberation. All right. Now I've got some different uh, internet briefs or internet, I should say different uh, briefs and uh, drills. So I'm going to give you the briefs. www is what w a u t dot com is d a u m dot net is d w e t dot gov is d w o f dot org d w o r g at is a t with the flag forward slash is f a s h and then dot if you have dot in the middle of the web address it's going to just be dot with the flag. Okay. All right, so here are some uh, different web addresses. Here we go, ready? www.bigfishgames.com, www.cntv.cn, www.popads.net, www.miniclip.com, www.googleusercontent.com, www.popcap.com, www.games.net, www.iplay.com, www.cnn.com, www.bbc.co.uk.gov, www.twitch.tv, www.wikia.com, www.fog.com, www.addictinggames.net, www.board.com, www.go.com, www.shock.wave.net, www.freeridegames.com, www.gamehouse.com, www.globo.net, and www.people.com. All right, one last drill. These are going to be sentences that have different numbers in them. Here we go. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I guess they're all not with numbers, but most of them are. Will he give you the $7,543 by Friday? Why he do it if he knew he'd get caught stealing the $100? Meet me at 10 o'clock at fourth and main street he owes me 150 dollars and he'd better pay jonathan hasn't paid the 550 dollars yet mary ellen won't give him the 700 dollars 500 dollars is what anthony owes alexandra have you been on the cafe or excuse me have you been to the cafe on 65th Street. Give Jean the $950 for the ring. Did Sheila share the silver coins with Al worth $1,000? Clyde Clayton will wear the silver suit that is worth $5,000. Sarah Sue Sorensen paid the $300 bill. Let's have lunch at B's on 3rd Avenue. Jamal Terrence will pay $90.54. She said she was there at 9.45 exactly. Mary Ellen refused to pay the $689. Dwayne gave her the bill for $543.31. 
167th and Sepulveda is flooded from the rain. Elizabeth and Michael each paid $36. Rick Fox will contribute $4,000 to the charity event. Fred Ferguson flew to Florida for only $279. Did you know he paid $167 round trip? They will pay the gas bill of $123.40 today. Isabel Eastman wanted to donate $2,500. The 10th Street off-ramp is closed until 7 p.m. tonight. All right. Moving into literary. Let's start off with uh, some Latin and French words along with the paragraph that follows it. You're going to hear guardian ad litem, mandamus, mens rea, and carpe diem. Here we go. I'm gonna read this at 120. A guardian ad litem is a person designed or designated by the court to conduct litigation on behalf of another. A guardian ad litem usually represents a minor. Mandamus means to command. A writ of mandamus is issued by a higher court commanding specific action by a lower court. Mens rea is sometimes described as the guilty mind. When a person has a criminal intent, he has mens rea. A guardian ad litem is normally appointed for the duration of the trial. A writ of mandamus may be issued to a non-judicial official. Carpe diem means to take advantage of today and place no trust in the future. Carpe diem literally means to seize the day. All right, now I've got some congressional record. It's on balancing the budget. I'm gonna start at 120 and I will work my way to 160. All right, here we go, ready? Mr. Speaker, my first piece of legislation was a proposed amendment to the Constitution to require a balanced federal budget. Obviously, this is in keeping with the voter priorities reflected not only in my district, but across the country. My bill was one of several that was introduced during the 98th Congress, which reflected a sense of national priorities. Now, as we are entering the 99th Congress, I sense an even stronger national mandate to limit the spending of the federal government and require more diligent adherence to fiscal responsibility by our national legislators. Today, I am introducing a proposed constitutional amendment to require a balanced federal budget and to assure that the budget will be balanced by putting a lid on federal spending, not by increasing the tax burden of the American people. My resolution would require the gradual elimination of deficient spending within 30 months of ratification. My resolution would prohibit federal expenditures from exceeding revenues in subsequent years. As critical as the need to reduce excessive government spending and eliminate a deficit or deficit from three years ago, it is even more critical today. We are confronted with double digit inflation and record high interest rates that are crippling the economy. The majority of Congress has professed support for a balanced budget. 35 states have already approved measures that call for a constitutional convention to draft a constitutional amendment to balance the federal bu budget. The people have demanded action 
and this Congress can respond to their pleas. Our elected officials must exercise fiscal responsibility. I urge my colleagues to channel their energy and attention toward this goal in the opening days of the 99th Congress. And that was deficit, sorry about that. I think I said deficient. All right. Let's go ahead and do some legal opinion and arguments. There we go, I'll start at 140 and work my way to 160. I'd like to first advise the court that what is at stake on this discovery motion is not simply categories of documents, some 60 questions involved in Penwell's deposition. I'd like the court to know that there are five depositions and five document productions or requests for document productions, which are pending at this time in this litigation, awaiting the outcome of the court's ruling on this particular motion, specifically the deposition of the president, Coast Federal, Mr. Blakely, Executive Vice President, Mr. Martin, and three other executives or officers, Van Zost, McNair, and Stemmler. I submit to the court if Huntington Center is wrong about the relevancy of all of these collateral matters, which they inquired into of Mr. Penwell, I think all of this information is a colossal waste of money and time on themselves and on these other five coast officers. Mr. Penwell's deposition consumed four days. 350 pages, which I hold in my hand, are the product of the first three days. The fourth day, which was on April 1st, has not even been transcribed so that this is the dimension of the kind of discovery which the court is being asked to permit here. With respect to documents requested for the purpose of ascertaining the intent of Coast Federal at the time that the lease was entered into in 2013, first of all, Coast Federal was not even involved in the lease transaction. One of its predecessors, Southern Federal Savings and Loan was. There could be documents still in Coast Federal's possession as a result of acquiring Southern Federal by merger. The problem here is they never really tell us what particular intent they are after as far as the requested document production. The lease provisions that we are concerned with here are pretty standard boilerplate kind of provisions. First, there is a standard covenant against subleasing and assignment without the lessor's consent. That is Article 15. We have Article 34, which say the lessor, whichever its consent is required, shall not unreasonably withhold its consent. Now, what conceivable patrol or, excuse me, parole evidence, Your Honor, would be introduced? to give some peculiar kind of interpretation to these provisions. As the court can see, there is a boilerplate printed lease produced and propounded by Huntington Center in 2015. I don't see what all the documentation with respect to the negotiation of this lease is going to prove and how that is going to resolve specifically the dispute which is before the court which is the validity of this sublease transaction. The issues are you have these two standard provisions and what you do is you look at the conduct of the parties with respect to the requested subleasing. The fact is Coast Federal made the request in May. All right, what ensued thereafter with respect to the assignments of the reliability and responsibility of the proposed subtenant and the conduct of both Coast and Huntington Center, which bear on the issue of waiver, estoppel, and good faith. The point is, Your Honor, I don't believe that by any strength of the imagination, it is relevant to go back to 2015, when this lease was executed, and start getting into everything that happened at that particular point in time. Now, with respect to the other requested discovery, 
both from the standpoint of documentation and the 60 questions which are the subject of this motion. The sole justification as I see it for all of this requested discovery is that COAST is the alleged COAST conduct was motivated by particular anti-competitive desires and that this somehow is relevant to the determination of this dispute, the validity of this sublease to Gold's Gym. What Huntington Center is trying to do here, Your Honor, is to place an issue the question of what Coast motivation precisely was when it asked Huntington Center for permission to consummate this sublease transaction. Specifically, they wanted to know what Coast motivation was in moving out of Huntington Center to relocate its branch office elsewhere in the center. And secondly, what its motivation was in wanting to sublease this property to Gold's Gym which admittedly is a non-savings and loan association subtenant. Coast submits that this issue of motivation is really not an issue and cannot be an issue in this case. It is a false issue. It is a non-issue in all of the following respects. First, Your Honor, with respect to the concept of a business moving from location A to location B in order to improve its business, that to me inherently by definition is not anti-competitive. It is competitive. The business is trying to improve itself, trying to compete better with its direct competitors in the area. There is nothing wrong and illegal about that. I can't see anything wrongful and illegal about a business, any business, not just the savings and loan business, wanting to move to a better location. What conceivably is anti-competitive about that? Secondly, let's assume for the purpose of argument that a business in location, say 91 Huntington Center, with the right under the lease provisions to sublet with the landlord's agreement not to unreasonably withhold consent is motivated after it moves out to a better location not to sublet to one of its direct competitors. I submit again, Your Honor, there is nothing wrongful, there is nothing illegal about that motivation, whether that is an only motivation or whether that is just a part of their motivation. I mean, if you look at it in another context, Your Honor, I submit it is absurd. Let's assume that McDonald's was at Huntington Center as a, lease, as a lessor. They wanted to move across the street to Edinger Plaza because there is a freestanding facility, the traffic is better, they had better visibility, so they move across and they want to sublet Huntington Center. Is it wrong for them not to want to sublet to Jack in the Box? We would like to sublet to another responsible, reliable, financially credible subtenant, which would be reasonably acceptable to the landlord. We didn't want to put a direct competitor across the street from us. Secondly, Your Honor, motive is irrelevant in the context of this kind of contract dispute. After all, this is a contract dispute. It has to do with the interpretation of a lease, sub, of a lease contract. I submit to Your Honor, if Coast is in violation of their master lease with Huntington Center and either moving out of the Huntington Center or in subletting to Gold's Gym, the fact that Coast was motivated <clears throat> by the most pure and pristine kind of belief what it was doing was right the court is going to say it's tough you may have that thought you were in violation of an agreement you may have thought you were in violation of the lease you forfeited the lease we evict the subtenant from the premises all right let's stop there there is more but We'll continue this at another time in our next class. All right, let's move into Q&A. I'm gonna start at 120. I will work my way to 160. Looks like plaintiff is questioning. All right, here we go, ready? 
is your basic area finance or accounting or a combination of both? Yes, a combination of both of them. I assume you have some type of degree? Yes. What kind of a degree do you have? BS degree. In what field is that? Major in public accounting. Where would that be from? New York University. And the year approximately? 1994. That was a good year. That is when I graduated. Do you have a CPA? Yes. This CPA, is that something that you get on a state-to-state -state basis or nationwide? It is a state-to-state -state basis. In what state do you have the CPA? New York. Any other states? No. Have you had any further formal education since New York University, 94? Some postgraduate work, as well as attending a variety of seminars. Would you tell me when and where you learned to swim? What relevance does this have, Council? Well, this case has to do with swimming in swimming pools. Certainly his background. What relevance does the fact that the treasurer of Doughboy swims or doesn't swim or what he does? It has no relevance to this case. Well, let me ask this question and maybe it will make more sense or be more obvious what the relevance is. When did you first learn that spinal cord injuries could occur from diving accidents at a very young age? Would you tell me what that young age was? Was that before 10, after 10? It would have been before 10. How did you learn that? Specifically, I am not sure. It would have either been from reading or visual, such as I can recall seeing a movie about a young girl that dove into a lake and didn't see an obstruction underwater at the point where she dove. It was shallow water, and because of the obstruction, she turned out to be a, I don't know whether it was a quad or a paraplegia. Was the name of that movie Joni by any chance? She is the one that I was familiar with. Whether it was that one or not, I don't know. Do you know who Joni is? Yes. How is it that you remember today so vividly that you learned of this kind of injury from diving before you were 10? I have been swimming since a very early age. Having been born across the street from the ocean, I have been told that when they couldn't find me, I was usually across the street. I have always seen pictures of myself in a swimming pool about the age of about two in Hawaii. Where did you grow up? The United States, all over the country. Well, you said you lived across from the ocean. I was born in Long Beach, California. How long did you live in Long Beach then? Oh, I don't know. Well, were you living in Long Beach the first 10 years of your life? No. First five years of your life? No. Less than five years? Less than five. Did you know that because you remember that or because you have been told that? No, I don't remember Long Beach at all. Just what I have been told. Pictures you have seen, I take it? Yes. Have you ever taken any swimming training? No. No Red Cross, YMCA, Boy Scouts, no summer camp. Some life-saving courses sponsored by Red Cross. Did you receive a certification in life-saving or lifeguarding? 
I may have, it is so long ago that I don't remember what I did. Do you remember being taught by Red Cross any courses about spinal cord injuries from diving? Not specifically, no. Do you know when Red Cross first started putting that information into their training programs? No. Have you ever dove? Yes. At what age did you learn to dive? I don't remember. Before 10, after 10? Probably before 10. Did you receive instructions in diving? No. Picked it up <clears throat> by watching other people? Yes. Where would you dive? Would you dive in open bodies of water or pools or both? Before you were 10, let's say? Would have been an open body of water, but it would have been protected area, an area that was open to the water, but bulkheaded. Where would you dive from? The float anchored out in deeper water. Did you ever participate in body surfing? Yes. At what age? What period of time did you do that? That is fairly recently after I came back out here to the coast. In the last 10 years, 15 plus. Are you aware of any dangers involved with body surfing? Yes. What are the dangers? If you are not careful, you can get around, you can get grounded into the sand by the waves in the water. You can be a quad like Joni, be in a wheelchair, right? Yes. Are you nodding your head yes? Yes. Why do you go ahead and body surf knowing that it can occur? If you exercise caution to prevent that kind of an accident, what is caution? What caution do you exercise? Usually it is in deeper water. How deep would that be? At least chest high in the wave. When you say chest high, are you talking chest high of yourself? Yes. How high are you? How high? How tall? About 11, excuse me, 5'11". Chest high would be a little over four feet on you. It would probably be four and a half feet. Have you ever body surfed in water that was less deep than that? I don't think so. Have you ever seen other people body surf in water less deep than that? Probably, I have seen some people also come up very scraped from being against the sand, against the sand. What part of the <clears throat> body did you notice the scrapes? The chest. What about the head? Oh, I don't remember specifically the head. Have you ever had occasion to go up and tell some of these other people body surfing in water less deep than yours that they can break their neck and be in a wheelchair forever? No, I never did. The body surfing you have done has been out here in the California coast, I assume. Correct. What beaches would you have body surfed on? Pismo, excuse me, Pismo, Leo Carrillo, and I am not sure how to spell that. It might be C-A-R-R-I-L-L-O. Any others? Probably, but those are two that come to mind, that we spend vacation time in both of those areas. Are you familiar with the Operation Wipeout out of Hogue Hospital, out of Newport Beach? No. Are you familiar with, well, what some people consider to be famous Newport Beach diving case, the $6.6 .6 million? I have heard of it, yes. Have you ever considered the possibility that when you were in the ocean body surfing in chest high water, that other people might see your body surfing and attempt to imitate what you are doing, not knowing what you know about being injured. That might occur. I hadn't particularly thought about it. Have you ever body surfed any on the East Coast? Not that I can recollect. What about diving into the waves? Have you ever engaged in diving into the waves? Probably. I mean, you know you are risking from doing that too, right? If you dive down, you don't dive properly. And how do you dive properly to avoid that occurring? 
you are diving into the wave. You are going through the wave instead of down into it. Is there any requirement that you have as far as depth is concerned in diving into the waves? You use your common sense. What is common sense to you? You evaluate the risk that you are willing to take <clears throat> versus the risk that is there. Well, how does that come into play in the depth? I mean, how does that tell you how deep the water should be before you attempt to dive into the wave? I have never done that. Maybe I am asking stupid questions, but I assume that you get waves of different height when you dive. Yes. Where do you choose the wave that you want, the height that you want? Let's say if it is possible. Well, I suspect that I don't do it when the water is ankle high. What about waist high? Possibly, probably nothing less than that, but diving through the wave, you are going to be on top of the water when you come out the other side of the wave. As I said, I haven't done any of these things, so you have to forgive my ignorance. When you do the body surfing, my understanding is that you try to get up on top of the wave and sort of ride it in such as if you were on a surfboard. Is that right? Yes. If you do body surfing in chest high water, as you told me at some point, as you are riding the wave, the water is going to get more shallow. Is that correct? Yes. How do you avoid getting hurt? when you get to the more shallow water on a body surf maneuver. Having come through the particular area, I become familiar with the area that you are going into. When you reach a certain point, you put your feet down. How do you know where that point is? If you are trying to explain to me how to do it so I wouldn't get hurt, where would you tell me to put my feet down. Run that one past me again. Council, what is all this about diving into the ocean? I think it is totally irrelevant. If you want, I think, if you want to educate yourself on surfing, I suggest that you conduct your discussion outside of the confines of this deposition or go online and do your research later. This has nothing to do with this case. It is totally irrelevant. I have allowed you to go on because sometimes it is easier to let you just ask these irrelevant questions than it is to terminate it. But you have gone far enough, so stop it. You are telling him not to answer the question? Yes, I am. Mr. St. George, isn't it true that the same basic concepts that you learned in the ocean that you engaged in in the last 15 years in body surfing and diving into the waves, the same basic concepts of how you do it and how you avoid injury and knowing that you can be injured apply to diving into above ground pools? I don't dive into above ground pools. No, but I mean if you did dive into an above ground pool, you knew that the same thing would happen to you that could happen to you from the body surfing or diving into the waves, right? Sure, because it is a shallow body of water. Don't you think there might be some people in the United States that feel the same way that you do about the ocean, that because they are familiar with it and because they know how to dive, that, that they can dive into an above ground pool without getting hurt? Possibly. I mean, that's the way you feel about the ocean, right? You feel you know how to do it. You realize that there is a risk, but you take the risk because you know how to do it, right? Yes. But in your opinion, people that think that way, as it relates to above ground pools, think wrong because it should not be done you should not dive into an above ground pool, correct? Under any circumstances? The pool, at least our pool, is not designed for diving purposes. 
Are you aware of any above ground pool made in the last five or six years that is made for diving? Not particularly, no, but then I am not familiar with every above ground manufacturer's product. All right, so let's do some Q&A, some read back. Right. And I'm going to read this once at 160, then again at 140, the last time at 120. And it is plaintiff questioning. What was that discussion to get it fixed? Was he going to put a false tooth in? I'm not sure what he was going to do. When was the last time you had a discussion with Dr. Crow about replacing the tooth? I don't remember. You don't have any other broken teeth by any chance, do you? No, I don't. So then actually, would it be a fair statement to say that you really only saw Dr. Crow one time in connection with the tooth? I think I saw him a few times, I don't know. I would have to look at the bills. Now with regard to any other injuries that you received in the accident, what other present complaints do you have that you relate to those injuries? Nothing outside of the ankle and the knee. I guess that is about the extent of it. Well, your main treating doctor was Samuel N. Jones. Is that right? Yes. When did you last see Dr. Jones for treatment or examination relating to the injuries that you received in the accident of July 4? Well, in your answer to interrogatories, you indicated that it was in the month of April. Would that in any way refresh your recollection? That is pretty close. It would be about two and a half years ago. When is the last occasion that you had any actual treatment for your knee or your ankle? I have had no special treatment from any doctor since the last time that I visited Dr. Jones. He said swimming was good for it, and I have done some of that. Have you done anything on your own since that April? Do you mean under the doctor's care or what he suggested to do? Certainly. Swimming or exercise, I like to play golf, but I can just barely make nine holes before my leg gives out. All right, so let's go ahead and do that again at 140. Here we go. What was that discussion to get it fixed? Was he going to put a false tooth in? I'm not sure what he was going to do. When was the last time you had a discussion with Dr. Crow about replacing the tooth? I don't remember. You don't have any other broken teeth by any chance, do you? No, I don't. So then actually, would it be a fair statement to say that you really only saw Dr. Crow one time in connection with the tooth? I think I saw him a few times. I don't know. I would have to look at the bills. Now with regard to any other injuries that you received in the accident, what other present complaints do you have that you relate to those injuries? Nothing outside of the ankle and the knee. I guess that is about the extent of it. Well, your main treating doctor was Samuel N. Jones, is that right? Yes. When did you last see Dr. Jones for treatment or examination relating to the injuries that you received in the accident of July 4? Well, in your answer to interrogatories, you indicated that it was in the month of April. Would that in any way refresh your recollection? That is pretty close. It would be about two and a half years ago. 
when is the last occasion that you had any actual treatment for your knee or your ankle? I have had no special treatment from any doctor since the last time that I visited Dr. Jones. He said swimming was good for it, <clears throat> and I have done some of that. Have you done anything on your own since that April? Do you mean under the doctor's care or what he suggested to do? Certainly. Swimming or exercise? I like to play golf, but I can just barely make nine holes before my leg gives out. Okay, let's do it one last time at 120. Here we go. What was that discussion to get it fixed? Was he going to put a false tooth in? I'm not sure what he was going to do. When was the last time you had a discussion with Dr. Crow about replacing the tooth? I don't remember. You don't have any other broken teeth by any chance, do you? No, I don't. So then actually, would it be a fair statement to say that you really only saw Dr. Crow one time in connection with the tooth? I think I saw him a few times. I don't know. I would have to look at the bills. Now with regard to any other injuries that you received in the accident, what other present complaints do you have that you relate to those injuries? Nothing outside of the ankle and the knee. I guess that is about the extent of it. Well, your main treating doctor was Samuel N. Jones. Is that right? Yes. When did you last see Dr. Jones for treatment or examination relating to the injuries that you received in the accident of July 4? Well, in your answer to interrogatories, you indicated that it was in the month of April. Would that in any way refresh your recollection? That is pretty close. It would be about two and a half years ago. When is the last occasion that you had any actual treatment for your knee or your ankle? I have had no special treatment from any doctor since the last time that I visited Dr. Jones. He said swimming was good for it and I have done some of that. Have you done anything on your own since that April? Do you mean under the doctor's care or what he suggested to do? Certainly. Swimming or exercise. I like to play golf, but I can just barely make nine holes before my leg gives out. All right, well that concludes our mid speeds live class. And since we don't have anybody here in the live class, there's really no point in going back and rereading it together. So what I want you to do is pick a selection or you can pick all three if you want. Go back and read your notes and compare uh, what I said to what you have in your notes. See how you did. Okay, that concludes our mid speeds live class. Have a wonderful day.